my computer, so I should be able to do this. Uh, let's do this and see if you guys can see it. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so yeah, um, like Candace was saying, I'm a very new agent, less than two months. Um, but my philosophy has kind of always been uh, work smarter, not harder. And I would like to do the uh, make the most amount of money doing the least amount of work. So when I heard about Facebook lead gens through command, um, obviously, I was pretty excited. Um, so I'm just going to do a basic walkthrough with you guys. And if you have any questions, just kind of stop me and That's let me know. Melissa, before you even did the ad, what was the action that you took? Reaching out to the Facebook or the WhatsApp? Um, right. Okay. So I discovered what Facebook lead gen was through command. Um, and to do that, um, you do need a listing to share. So what I did was reached out into the PC group on WhatsApp to see if anyone had a listing um, coming up in the next week so I can plan it accordingly. Um, Sorry, my kids are in the bathtub. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Candace was so nice to um, have a listing coming up the following week. So I was able to use hers. I did not even use a listing that I had. I don't have any listings. I would like to say that almost any listing agent would be thrilled to have someone reach out to them and say, can I place an ad with your listing? Because it's extra exposure for the seller that you don't have to pay for as a listing agent. So there, there's no reason to be shy about that. And, um, and you're probably gonna get great response. Uh, yeah, uh, trust me, even people after were like, hey, I have one coming up too, do you wanna do mine? So just ask, you know, just, yep. just ask. Um, all right, so once I identified the listing that I was going to promote, and the fact that I wanted to attract buyers with my ad, um, you what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and log into command. Um, this should be everyone's homepage, I'm pretty sure. Um, I like to expand this because I always forget what the icons are. Uh, you're gonna go down here to campaigns. Thinking, thinking. Okay. There we go. All right, so it's gonna bring you up to your um, dashboard here, just kind of your overview of all the ads that you've done so far. Um, you're gonna click here onto paid ads. I also currently have one running on Google, um, which I'm learning too. So I'm not gonna talk about that today, but. I'm trying to see how that one goes. Um, so you're gonna go over here to create campaign and it'll give you all of these options. So you can even do um, some of your emails from here and your social posts, your Instagram, your Facebook, that kind of stuff. Um, I chose a social ad that was paid. And then here you always have to enter a name um, just name it whatever you want. I literally named mine test for Candace because I had never done this before. And then I went down to attract buyers. Obviously there's all of these other options here. Um, so you can kind of just pick and choose whichever um, you're trying to run that day. And then I am going to just do mine on Facebook. If you have your Instagram or Twitter, you can do those as well. Um, Candace, do you actually maybe have a, a listing ID that we can use just for test purposes? Um, yeah, let me just minimize and uh, this is one that just went active today. One second. Yeah, of course. Um, so while Candace is getting that, you're gonna go ahead and click add listing. And then here it'll give you a drop down of either by property address, MLS number, or by the listing agent. Um, so I actually may be able to look up Candace. Uh, make sure on the right here, it, it always defaults to only my listings, 
So you'll never find one if you're looking for it and you don't have one. Make sure that says all listings. So I've got a listing number for you. Uh, sure, let's do that. Okay, 691-6124. Oh wait, it's supposed to be active. Let me change it to active. Oh, I can do uh, coming soon also. No, it was on hold, so. Okay. If not, I'll give you a different one. Oh, there we go. The Moreland one, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. So this was actually the property I ran. Oh, my do you want a different one? No, it's okay, because okay. I'm just showing everybody. Okay. All right, so there you go. It's gonna auto pop in there for you. And on the right, on the ad preview, it's just gonna put in those MLS pictures for us. All right, so text. I changed this a little bit um, from Candace's MLS posting, um, but this is just gonna be your text. So you can go ahead and change this. It does auto populate like the first two lines of the MLS listing. Um, you can make that whatever you want. And again, on the right-hand side here, it's gonna preview how it'll show on Facebook. Um, headline, I think I put, was it 1920 as well? And again, on the right, you're going to see how it auto populates onto the um, onto the preview. So it's going to show on the bottom there. Description. Um, again, I used the description basically from the MLS listing. You only have 250 characters, so just be careful what you use. Um, but that is also going to show on the bottom here of the ad. Uh, let's just go ahead and save that. The next kind of drop down here is going to be your media. So it just gives you the um, cover photo for the MLS listing. You can go ahead and add more images depending on what, um, if it's a friend of yours, you know, you can use their pictures or you can just pull them off the listing itself. Um, you also have the option to change your logos at all. And if, you, if you're on a team and you have a team logo and you want to add that, you can do that there uh, as well. And then we are going to go here to Facebook settings. Something I didn't say in the beginning is you need to connect your social media account first. So if you come here and you see this is blank, it's because you did not link your Facebook uh, account or Facebook page to it. You do need a page, like a business page to attach to this to run it properly. So if, and I'll just interject, if you don't have a Facebook page, does, it, does everybody have a Facebook page? Or does anybody not have a Facebook page? No judgment zone here. Okay, and if you don't know how to connect it uh, to, to command, uh, Raven usually goes over that in the orientation or you can ask her and she can help you with that. Yep, also guys, you can just go right here and click connect and you'll see it all um, just kind of, it's a whole drop down. So you would just scroll down to whichever social media account you wanna connect and it'll walk you right through it there. Fantastic. Um, okay, so I've got two pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and select um, my realtor page. And then I want it, to a Facebook lead gen form. So what happens is when they click on this ad, it will automatically um, put in their um, name, telephone number, and their email that's linked to Facebook. And they have to send that before they can view the property. Um, you can also choose to send them to a landing page or your site if that's you know your goal. Um, but I found this to be, Perfect because you're, you know, they enter that information and they have to click yes until to even see the property itself. Um, I left it as learn more, but if you guys are going for a different goal, you can change that to sign up or apply now. Um, if you're using it for, um, you know, profit share purposes and growing your tree, you can always do an ad there and do apply now. Um, and then Oh, right, I had, there we go. So I'm gonna leave that there. 
I left it as Atlanta 20 miles because of the type of ad that I was using. If you guys want to change any of those parameters, you're just going to click on use custom settings. And then you can go ahead here and change this to, um, you know, another city, a different mile radius, um, really just depends who and what or what area you are trying to target. Once that's complete, oh, what did I do here? Oh, okay, so this is gonna be the, the site that you drive them to to view the listing. Um, I'd have to look up which link I used, but I believe it was to that page on my website. So you're gonna copy the link. I'll walk you guys through it really quick here. So I went to melissaguy.kw.com. Uh, questions? Does anybody have any questions so far? Yeah, well. So go ahead and search that 1061 Moreland. What did I do here? Did I spell that wrong? Uh, M O R E L A N D. I thought it was right. For some reason, it's not coming up here. That's so weird. I don't know why this isn't coming up here. Let's use this as a code real quick. It's in Ormwood Park, if that helps. I saw that as one of your choices. Hi, your mommy. Well, hi, baby. Give me one second, okay? What's in the more important? Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's so strange. What was the neighborhood again? Candace, what was the neighborhood? Ormwood Park, O R M E W O O D. It might be because it's on hold. That's probably what it is. Uh, okay. I just changed it, but it might take a minute. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's that's definitely it. Let me um, give you a different. Let me give you a different address that's live, just okay. just for illustration purposes. Three four one zero Waters Edge Trail. Yep. I was gonna say. Let's just use that one. Trail, Water's Edge Trail. Okay, here we go. Okay, yep, so that's let's it. hypothetically say that we uh, use this listing instead. So what I would do is go ahead, search that on your website. Go ahead and copy that hyperlink. I'm so sorry, my children are animals. And then you're gonna just stick that URL in right there. This way, once they click on that ad and they have to give you their information, they're gonna go right to that ad, um, right to the listing that the ad was for. Something that was drilled into me is the integrity of your ad. So a lot, Sam really says a lot that you need to just be truthful and as honest as possible in your ads. So don't 
put an ad out for this and then kind of send them to, I don't know, a listing page for $1.5 million homes, you know, because that's just going to cause them to not click again. I'm wondering why this is, come on. Everybody following along so far? Yeah, I always feel like I go too fast or slow, so please no, stop. You're, you're doing great. I just want to make sure sometimes people get, if they're following along, they get stuck in a certain place, and I want to make sure they've got a chance to, to catch mm -hmm. up. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or anything yet, just yet? Okay, okay. All right, so silence, I guess, is a good thing. So this uh, question is, what do you want to happen with the leads that come in from this campaign? So what I did was made two custom tags. Uh, well, one custom tag. So I did Facebook, and then so I chose Facebook as a tag. So I knew where my lead uh, was coming from. And then I did mark them as a lead. Um, I did not assign my uh, leads to smart plans at first. Um, I followed up with them via phone and text before I added them to a smart plan first. And then last but not least is gonna be your duration and budget. They do recommend a 10 day campaign. I did try that out. I did it um, for $20 for 10 days and so that's that. So I did it for that. And I'm just going to go back really so quick. That was, so that was $2 a day? Uh, yes. Okay. So oh, I'm just going to save this draft. So right, I, did, I ran mine for $20 for 10 days. I ended up getting, let's see what it was here. So it was 10 days. I ran it from the 6th to the 16th. I spent 29. Oh, I guess I spent 20. Oh, wait. Mm. Oh, okay. That's a different number. Um, so it was 28 cents per click, $1.82 per lead. I had 11 leads and I spent $20 total. Excellent. So 11, 11 leads for $20. And if even one of them closes, if even one of them closes or one of them leads you to someone who closes, boy, I can't even do that kind of math in my head with that return on investment would be. Yeah, and the only other thing I will say is, so um, I, I did follow up via phone with everyone. I only spoke to, I'd say three or four of those people. Um, one gentleman was not very happy with my phone call, um, but we had a nice conversation. And then the others um, are definitely going to be needed, uh, excuse me, need to be assigned to a smart plan of some sort. But I was chatting with another friend of mine who's an agent up in New York, and he was letting me know how valuable the text message smart plans are because of the long lead time with Facebook generation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of something that I'm going to set up in the next couple of weeks um, because I, I, they, they definitely take a lot longer than other channels, but the value is still there. So, so what I know is that if you have, if you, if you have short term, for instance, you're doing cold calling like on Vulcan and um, you're getting immediate, like you're calling expireds and FISBOs who are ready to sell right now. And then you have something like this in place then you know that you have, what you want is you want to have a rolling kind of, um, a rolling kind of cycle of leads coming in so that you're not constantly wondering where your next lead's going to come from. So having leads out there for six months to a year is a really good thing because those are the people when you nurture them that are going to give you your business next year. So you don't have to scramble so hard to get immediate leads. And, and they can, they're, they're part of why a business in real estate can scale double each year so which is a reasonable goal for a lot of agents um is is to so for instance if this year i did 10 i want to do 20 next year it's partially because of those long-term leads 
that I'm nurturing that I can do that. So they're very valuable. They just aren't as immediate and not necessarily. Now, sometimes they can be, but not necessarily. So yeah, I haven't even, I'd say how to have like a real conversation with any of them about it, but um, they all are looking for, I'd say six plus months because they were all people who were just like clicking and looking to get an idea. Yeah, and what I would probably, and, and so so I, I think this is just awesome that you took the initiative to do this and that you're competent enough to teach it, which is fantastic. Um, I would also say that it's important to have a follow-up plan, um, like Melissa said, that she's developing um, so that you know that you, you've got to respond to the leads, otherwise they just go away, right? So you've got to respond to them. They've raised their hand and said, I'm interested in this house. I might, before I called them, um, know of some other listings in that price point in the same area. Um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily make that a criteria that I had to do before I called them because mostly what you want to do is call and ask a lot of questions and find out what it is they're interested in, why they clicked on it, what prompted them to stop out of all the things that they get to, to stop scrolling and click on that ad, what caught their attention. There's a couple of reasons why. One, you can learn whether your headline's good, whether that's what caught their attention, or whether it was the photo, or whether it was the copy. So you can learn where you need to tweak your ads by asking those kinds of questions, like what caused you to stop scrolling? And then you start the buyer intake form, of, or they might be a seller for that, for that matter. They might just be comparing other homes to their home. So they could be a seller lead too. So you're just gonna, you're gonna plug in and ask the appropriate questions depending on who they are and, and what, what their needs are. And the more you can find out about them, I mean, and you know, and develop rapport over the phone, the better off you are. Um, so the the big thing I would say is, and I I think it was Drew who told me this. He said he was doing open houses for a while, and all of a sudden it just clicked for him that these are just people coming in, and so he started just having conversations with people, a very very guided, directed conversations, but they weren't scary anymore. And I think that's one of the things, if you start realizing these are people just like you and me that are scrolling through their Facebook and all of a sudden they see something that catches their attention. And so they, they reach out and they get a phone call back because they've given you permission to call them back. They're no longer on the do not call list when they've responded to an ad with their information. Um, so, so sometimes if they're reluctant or, or um, irate because you've called them, they've given you permission. And so then you just do what Melissa did, which I thought was pretty amazing. This guy was not happy with her calling, but she turned the conversation around and they end up having a nice conversation. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, Melissa? Yeah, Candace, I, I was going to say, when you guys do this, if you do this, I mean, really be prepared for anything. And I'll say I was terrified making these phone calls because I had never, to me, this is like the coldest of the calling that I'm comfortable with. Um, so when this gentleman was very, um, upset with me, um, interrupting his day, like he, he quoted, uh, what did he say? He called us like all of you agents. Um, and I, I simply apologized because my call really was to get information that, that truly was the reason I called this man. So when he thought my next question was, you know, are you looking to buy how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, what's your price point? my first question to him was what caught your eye you know are, are you just looking like i general i genuinely was interested in in what he was doing on the internet that day and was, he appreciated the fact that i did not just call him to try and sell him he appreciated the fact that i called to kind of get to know him instead and by the end of the phone call he thanked me for not being like the others so That's fantastic so just be yourself and I you're not going I mean I would say it's a unicorn if you call one of these people and they say yeah sure come over I want to buy a house next month um if that happens amazing tell me what you did um but really I think this should be used for a real a kind of like a weird Facebook introduction like how people will randomly like and friend people on Facebook kind of the same thing we're just looking for people that might want to buy a house in six months to a year yep anybody have anything to add this is a mastermind which means that we can share ideas it's not just a training 
So if you anybody wants to come off mute, share any experiences they've had or anything that they're doing that's working, I would love that. Yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing for now. Thank you so much, Melissa. And if you, you can stay on if you want to, if you have to go, we understand. Um, I'll give everybody one more chance. Does anybody have any questions for Melissa? I do, I do. Um, okay. My question was, it did give you the option to select like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I was just wondering if you're, do you have an Instagram account, Melissa? So I do. I, I personally kind of use my social media for different things. I use my Facebook page for kind of like strict market information. And then I use my Instagram page for, I will say more um, just like content marketing about neighborhoods, open houses, et cetera. So I, I haven't run a Facebook ad yet um, simply because I guess it's public. So I've been very strategic about hashtags that I've been using for those posts instead of doing a paid ad. That Did you sense. mean Instagram instead of Facebook? Right. Yeah. Facebook, I feel like it's much harder to reach a broad amount of people because you need to be connected to them or you need to be friends with them. With Instagram, all you need is a public profile and good hashtags and you'll get in front of other users. Can you share some of the hashtags you use on Instagram that seem to be successful for you? Sure. Candace, did I actually get those from you? I think so. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I gave, I gave a page. Okay. Yeah. Nadine, I'll, I'll look back because I definitely have them. Um, I have them somewhere and I will, and, I will put them for you. And, and here I can just share right quick. Um, yes. Hashtags for realtors. Use Insta, Instagram. The most, the most important thing I can teach you is to be resourceful. And I'm not shy about saying that Google is my brain. So um, let me see if I can go right here. Okay, so I just Googled the best hashtags for realtors to use in, in um, Instagram. And here's some of the ones that come up. Hashtag real estate, hashtag realtor. And then I would probably Google next. What hashtags do home buyers or home sellers look for in Instagram? That would be my second resourceful action. Um, but these are some of the hashtags. Can you all see that? I see that, but I remember like watching something and it says when we put those hashtags with real estate and realtors, it only popul it populates more to people who are realtors and real estate. So that's why I was just wondering. Which is, which, which is why I would say probably... Um, what hash best hacks hashtags? What ha this is what I'd probably do next. What hashtags reach home buyers on Instagram? Any question you have, you can ask. So, um, for hashtag for sale, hashtag new home, hashtag house hunting, hashtag property, hashtag properties. I probably do hashtag best homes in Alpharetta, hashtag best homes in Roswell. I'd probably, because people do, you know, or, or uh, hashtag homes in the homes under 400,000 in Ormwood Park, hashtag homes under 400,000 in Atlanta. I'd use all those kinds of hashtags that people are looking for. Yeah, Nadine, I actually had someone come to the open house um, yesterday because of my Instagram post. I think they said they searched, um, it, it was either open houses Roswell or open houses Atlanta, something like that. Um, so just kind of anything that's relevant to what you're doing. And here's a, how real estate agents market to first time home buyers. I'm not saying everything on the internet is good and don't believe everything you read on the internet, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of information out here. Pretty much, pretty much, um, anything that you can think of that you have a question about. Like if my question was, how do I reach buyers on Instagram? Well, I'm going to type that into my Google search. If my question is how to reach luxury home sellers, I'm going to type that into my Google search. Um, so like I say, the most important thing that I can teach you is to be resourceful so that you don't have to wait for a conversation with somebody. Um, and that's not to say we're not needed because I hope we are, but um, 
it's just to say that some you'll gain from experience and some you'll gain just by asking those questions. So I love that you love that Nadine that you always have questions. I love that. Anybody else? Any comments? Well, we're gonna get off really early tonight then. I just wanna thank everybody for being here. Melissa, I wanna thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, for being resourceful enough to figure it out and actually, you know, I know that it probably made you really uncomfortable to do that because you didn't know what the response would be. And I just, as a newer age, and I wanna applaud you for that. And um, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, everybody. Uh, all right. Bye, everybody. Have a great night. Bye. Bye. Bye.